In chapter eight, section one, we're gonna change gears a little bit from statistics, and we're gonna start thinking about geometry. So section one in chapter eight, there's a lot of upfront reading, which obviously I'm gonna assign that for you to do, but we're gonna start kind of in the middle of this section that deals with basic terms and ideas. I'm gonna start talking about points, lines, and planes, and then I'm gonna show you a really cool website that you can use whenever to help you uh, demonstrate these things in class if you want to, but it's really gonna be beneficial for us because these are videos and I can't show you how to measure angles with a protractor because I don't have all these cameras all over the place. But anyways, basic terms and ideas. So the first thing is we wanna get out of the way the basic things when it comes to points, lines, and planes. So a point, all right, a point has no dimension. All right, meaning it doesn't have any length, doesn't have any width, but it does have a location. Okay, a line is nothing more than a like an infinite amount of points connected together. All right. So a line, let's, let's write this a little sim more simply. How about this? A line has an infinite amount of connected points that extend infinitely in both directions. Okay. And finally, a plane is considered to be a flat surface that extends infinitely in all directions. Now, an example of each of these, okay, um, if we're just looking at this, a point, we just use it as like a little dot, all right? Remember, it has no dimension, no length, nor width, but it does have a location. That is why on a, here we go, number line, if you wanted to tell me where the position one is, you would just give me its location right there on that number line. Now, a line is basically an infinite amount of dots that are all connected together that move infinitely in the left and right positions. Finally, a plane looks something like this. Okay? And it extends in all directions. All right? So, for example, and this is a little bit beyond the scope of the course, but what we would say is a point has no, di no dimension whatsoever. A line is one dimension, all right, or 1D. Now, if you have two lines, and you should be familiar with this, this is two dimensions, which you and I know this as the X and Y rectangular coordinate system. Finally, a plane is in three dimensions. So right here on the ground or the flat surface, well, that's your X and Y coordinate plane. It's on the ground. But then if you move it up or down, that's your Z axis. So you can see that even though, like if we look at the X and Y plane notice that it's a flat surface but you can extend that up and down just by increasing z or decreasing the z axis all right like i said beyond the scope of the course but i wanted to show you this and this is what we call three dimensions and if you're really interested there's a fourth dimension called space-time
There's this place called YouTube. I'm sure you can find something great on there. But anyways, back to this. So, if we have two points on a line, so let's say we have this line right here. We have points A, and then we have point B. These two points are said to be co-linear, and that's because they are on the same line. Sorry, there's two L's in, in co collinear. Both lie on the same line. Now we can extend this a little bit further. Let's say I have something that looks like this. So here we have three lines, and this is always the way we kind of teach it. So we got A, B. Make that C, and then I'll extend this line a little bit further. And we'll put this one D over here. What we could say is A, C, and D are all collinear because they're all on the same line, all right? Also, A, B are collinear. B, C are also collinear. However, A, B, and C are non-collinear, and that's because this point B here is not on the same line as A and C. So it's just one of those things where you're just defining the shape, position, and how everything relates to itself. And since I'm drawing all these lines, we might as well start talking about line segments and rays. So a line segment is a subset of a line that contains two points called endpoints. Now, please remember that a subset is a set within a set. All right, so for example, all of you are CCAC students. So I'll draw like a little circle here. Everyone here is a CCAC student. However, the subset will be Math 110 students. So you create the subset Math 110. Now, if we think about this definition in terms of the line segment, here we have a line. And remember, lines go infinitely in either two directions. But between these two endpoints, here we have a line segment. Okay? Now, a ray is a subset of a line that contains a specific endpoint and everything to one side of that. So a ray is a subset of a line with one endpoint and contains all the points to one side. So for example, here we have our line, but a ray Could look like this all right where you have a and then it extends the one one direction all right you could also have something that looks like this too don't forget it includes all the points as well so you can have point a and b but as long as it goes to one side you have a ray now we do have notation for this so here's our term 
Here's an example. And finally, our notation. So a line looks like this. And the notation is AB with a double headed arrow above or BA with a double headed arrow above. With a line, there's no direction. A line segment is a subset of that line. So it looks like this. And the way that we write this is just AB with a bar over top or BA with a bar over top. Finally, we have that ray. So that's going to look like this. And we'll do the most general. We include all the points with it. However, rays are very specific. This is the ray A to B because it's going into the right direction. This does not equal this situation here. The second situation, and I'm going to highlight it in green. This would be B. That's where like, like where the ray starts would be point B. And then you're going to the left or in the A direction. So these two things are not the same. We have relationships between lines. And like I said, you are familiar with this. Maybe nobody's ever asked you, hey, do you know any relationships between lines? But you do, because here's the very first one. These are just called intersecting lines. All right, so they just intersect at this point right here in the middle. Now, the, th the two famous ones that everybody knows are perpendicular lines. And graphically, what makes these perpendicular is the fact that you form a 90-degree angle. And we're going to talk about angles here in a little bit. But perpendicular lines intersect and form a 90 degree angle. The other one you know, parallel lines. Parallel lines never intersect. Okay? And then the third one, which we're gonna talk about it because it's this course, but normally, you would just call them intersecting. If you have more than one line that intersects all at some point, we call these concurrent lines. And they all intersect at some point. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to move that. Now, whenever we have two lines... Let's be more specific. Oh, whenever we have two rays that form a union, we get an angle. So let me be more specific now with a picture. Notice here we have two rays. The point at which they meet, which is called the union, well, another name for that is the vertex. All right, it's the vertex. So we have a side and we have a side. All right, now when it comes to angles, we have two types of angles. We have an interior and an exterior. So let me show you, let me show you both. So I'm just gonna draw the angle again. The interior angle is on the inside. All right, and like I said, we call that the interior. The outside angle, that's the exterior angle.
And finally, we're going to learn how to name angles. So angles always get capital letters. So here we go. So we'll call this angle A. And the way that we abbreviate this, like if we were writing, we would just do like a little, it looks like a less than sign, but it's actually the angle sign. And we would call this angle A. All right. Now, there's a major problem with this notation though. What if you have more than one angle? So like for example, what if we have something that looks like this? Well, in this scenario, we have one, two, three, four different angles. So how do we figure out what angle we are talking about? One way is to label them one, two, three, four, which is fine. But the other way we do this is we create these points, and I'm going to call this in the middle. We'll call that A. You get a thinner marker here. So we're going to call this A. I'm going to make this C and this B up above. So the way that we name angles is we always go in the direction that forms the interior. So this could be angle B, A, C. Now, the most important part is that the vertex is in the middle. That is the most important part. Now, I can extend this to other angles inside. So I used A, let's see, A, B, C already. So how about D? And we'll make this point E. So I'm going to do this. I'll color code everything so it'll look all nice. So first we have, let me get rid of the highlights. So first in red, we have angle BAC. Then in purple, all right, and I'll shade this in a little bit. In purple, we have angle DAE. In green, We have angle EAB, and then finally in blue, we have angle DAC. So you can see how we label the angles now, and we name them. And remember, the vertex always goes in the middle. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to measure angles. And we're going to start classifying them as well. So unfortunately, I don't have a fancy TV lab with all these cameras and everything to show you how we measure. But normally, we measure ang angles with a protractor. So if you forget what a protractor looks like, I'm going to go ahead real quick to the internet. Let me drag this window down here. Oh, geez, what just happened? There we go. And I'll type in the word protractor. And this is what a protractor looks like. You can get them at any store for like a dollar or two. There we go. So this is a protractor and this is how we measure angles. All right. And like I said, unfortunately, I don't have all this fancy technology here, but I do have an unbelievable website. So the website that I want us to go to, and you can do this as well, and if you want, you could just follow along. It is called GeoGebra. So G-E-O, G-E, -E, and as soon as you get there, here's what it looks like. It's a G-E-O, G-E-B-R-A. And we're just going to open this up and we're going to go ahead and click on start the calculator. And on the left hand side, far left hand side, you're going to see where it says tools. So I click on tools and this big window pops up. All right. So to measure angles, 
using this, you gotta be, you just have to be a little bit careful about where you click and everything. So like, for example, to measure an angle, first we need some lines, we need some rays. So I click on the, on the ray tool, which is under lines. And then over here on the right hand side, I can just click anywhere I want and I form a ray. So this is ray A to B. Now I'm gonna do this again. So click on ray. And this time I'm gonna click on A, but then I'm gonna go above B somewhere. All right, and there we go right there. So here I just formed an angle. But now the question becomes, well, how do I, how do I measure this angle? Well, give me a second. First thing I wanna do is zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna click on move, move this over here. We're gonna zoom in some. There we go. Now remember, this is gonna be angle B, A, C. You wanna do it with the vertex in the middle. And Geo GeoGebra is really good at like trying to figure out what you want. So if you mess up, don't worry, you can just start over again. But if you go over to the left, you're gonna see the word measure. Underneath the word measure is angle. So we click on angle and it says, hey, select three points. But watch what happens. I'm gonna select on B first, then A. And when I go to move up to C, watch where the angle occurs inside. See how it starts to build itself? So as long as I move my cursor, it's gonna build itself. Oops, I didn't mean to click there, I could tell you that. So let's do that again, angle, B, A, C. And here's the angle right here, and it, is an ugly looking angle, right? It says, what is that? Alpha equals 47.39, it's crazy. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna select it, go to settings, and I'm gonna just make it one decimal place. <laughs> that way it looks pretty. And there we go. So that angle is 47.4. So what I can do here, Let's copy and paste this into our notes. And that is how we use a protractor to measure an angle. Now, this angle specifically has a very special name. If your angle is in between, yeah, we'll just, we'll label this A. Oh, it's already labeled, my bad. So if your angle is in between zero and 90, we call that an acute angle, all right? So any angles in between zero and 90, degree, 90 degrees are called acute, all right? Now, let's go back to GeoGebra because I can show you something else that's kind of neat. So within GeoGebra, I'm gonna click on the Move tool and do you see point C? I'm gonna move this. And notice my angle is increasing. So if I move this left and right, the angle increases or decreases. So now any angle that is bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, oops, that is called obtuse. So we're gonna copy this and paste it into our notes. And this angle here is an obtuse angle because that angle is in between 90 and 180 degrees. Now, the next angle is one that I think we are all familiar with. And that one is right here. Try my hardest to get this nice and right. Ah, there it is. This is a right angle. And a right angle is always gonna be 90 degrees. So I can copy and paste this into our notes. So a 90 degree angle is a right angle. 
And that's when angle A is exactly 90 degrees. Then we have two more types of angles that we're going to go over. That is going to be the straight angle. So a straight angle looks like this. Take C and I'm going to drag it all the way down. In fact, let me try to just do this. This will make it so much easier for me because then I can use the X axis as like a anchor point. All right. So here's 180 degrees. Now the name of this angle is called a straight angle. And that occurs when your angle equals 180 degrees. And then finally, the last one is called a reflex angle. All right, there we go. So this is called a reflex angle, and that is when your angle is greater than 100 degrees. Or I'm sorry, 180 degrees. I think I said 100 degrees, and I didn't mean that. All right? So we have all these different types of angles that exist. But then we have relationships with these angles. All right? So like, for example here, let's go back. Let's start a brand new page right here. All right, so I cleared everything out and I kind of made this look a little nicer. We're going to zoom in here just a little bit. Let me move this over. Oh, I have Ray on. Hold on. We'll get rid of that. All I want to do is just move this over. Get rid of that. All right, here we go. So... I'm going to create a ray and I'm going to use the X axis as my common side. I'm going to start at the origin and just go this way. Then I'm going to create another ray and come up here and I'll do one more. 90 degree. And I'm going to change this one just a little bit just so we can see their, the relationship here. So I'm gonna copy and paste this into our notes first. And then we're gonna talk about it a little bit. So in this scenario, scenario here, we have basically two angles. We have the first angle right here. All right, and this is gonna be angle BAC but then we also have this angle here now this is going to be angle CAD and there is a relationship between these two angles and that's because when you look at what I have here Notice that is a right angle right there, right? That's a right angle. So whenever you have two angles and they add up to 90 degrees, we call those two angles complementary angles, all right? So these are called complementary angles. Now, if we knew one of the measurements of one angle, we can find the other one by using this relationship. So, if I go back into GeoGebra here, all right, and I use my measure angle tool, 
So here's our angle right here. I'm going to move it out a little bit so we can all see it. So that's alpha equals 31.2. And let's see if I can just make that a little bit bigger here for us. All right, there you go. So I, I made the angle a little bit bigger. It's 31.2 degrees. So we can use this to our advantage. What we can say is, I'm just gonna copy and paste this again. I can pose the question, if angle BAC equals 31.2 degrees, find angle CAD. Well, remember, when you have two angles and their sum is 90, those are complementary angles. So, we know angle BAC plus angle CAD has to equal 90. Since angle BAC is 31.2 degrees, All we have to do is just subtract 31.2 from both sides. And that's going to give me angle CAD to equal 90 minus 31.2 is 58.8 degrees. And the beautiful thing about GeoGebra is you can check yourself. So if we go back into GeoGebra, sorry, I know it's a lot of clicking back and forth. But if we go back and use the measure tool, I'm gonna to measure C, A, D, and notice here, I'm just gonna move it up. We get exactly 58.8, which is what we calculated on the other page. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take B, or I'm sorry, D, and I'm going to just move it to the left. And what you're going to notice between these two angles. Oh, it's not letting me. I guess I'm going to have to create a new one here, which is fine by me. So let's go ahead. We're going to delete everything real fast. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. Two new rays. All right, so there's our first one. And there's our second one, okay? And I'm gonna measure these two angles here, all right? So in this scenario, and you know what? Let's go ahead and let's go this way too. Perfect. So copy and paste this into our notes. In this situation, we still have two angles. Here's the first. All right, and here's the second. Okay, in, in two different colors. The first one is going to be angle BAC. Our second angle is going to be DAC. And when you have two angles, angle one plus angle two, and they add up to 180 degrees, we call those supplementary angles. Okay, we call them supplementary angles. So what's nice about this, if you knew one of the angles, you can find the other one using the supplementary angle definition. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this for us. So we're going to measure our angles. So the first angle, BAC. We can see that that is 134.5 degrees. And then if we took 180 minus 134.5, we would end up getting... Oops. Give me one second here. I went the wrong way. And you could tell if you went the wrong way because when you go to make the angle, do you see how it gives you the reflex angle, the outside angle? We don't want that one. So what I'm going to do here is just go back. 
click on angle C A D. And this is going to be 45.5 Put it right down there. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this into our notes. All right, all right, all this is looking good. Now, in general, we do have this scenario here. Okay, these are called vertical angles. Now, vertical angles occur when you have just two concurrent lines that intersect. So, let me get out a red marker. This angle here, we'll call this angle one. And this angle here, we'll call this angle four. We say are congruent to each other. And that's a new word for us. All right. Now, congruent is just a fancy way of saying same size, same shape. All right, it's just a fancy way of saying same size, same shape. So angles one and four are congruent. And angle two and angle three are also congruent to each other. And... A great way to demonstrate this is to go ahead and use some sort of protractor. So I'm going to go ahead, once again, use my favorite tool, which is GeoGebra. So let me just erase everything here. And I will prove to you that they are, in fact, congruent to each other. So we're going to create two lines. All right. So there's one line. Here's the other line, and I'm gonna put a point directly in the middle so I can measure the angles app appropriately. And let's go ahead, let's do these angles. So the first one, angle CAE, 57.7. I wish I could move that further, but it won't let me. All right, next angle. How about B, B, E, C? That's going to be 122 degrees. Next. D, A, E. And look at this. It is 57.7, which is the same as the other one. And finally... Oh, wrong way. Let's go the other way here. AED is 122.3. So everything here works out perfectly. And they're all in angles one and four congruent, two and three are congruent as well. A lot of pictures in this in this lecture today. Oh, what's going on here? Paste. There we go. So I'll just color code them so we can see them easier. Congruent. And congruent. Perfect. And that will be it for this video. It was a lot. Remember the website is www geogebra.com there are tons of youtube videos on how to use this and stuff like that um it should be relatively straightforward once you get it try it out if you like it keep it if not you don't ever have to use it again <laughs> all right so see you in the next video